Hello everyone, I am Silver. It is Monday, November 5th. I just wanted to say a quick hello to all new viewers and a great welcome back to all returning viewers. Now, if you tuned in last time and decided to come back, I really do appreciate it. I know it was a very long episode. Um, I'm going to try to keep it short this week, but as it's been kind of a busy month, I can't make any guarantees. I'm sorry. Um, I am in a new area today, so if you hear a lot of... Um, there's a lot of background noises. It could be anything from the my drink right by the microphone. Sorry, it was the best place to put it. My needles are kind of near the microphone, and the chair that I'm sitting in is so old it likes to squeak. That being said, uh, I just wanted to say, you know, how was your October? Um, like I said, mine was pretty good, and I do have lots to talk to you about, so I should probably get started, right? Well. Grab your drink of choice, your projects, and away we go. Today I'm actually just drinking uh, seltzer water, mostly because it is making my stomach feel better. <laughs> I did a little bit too much drinking and partaking and stuff with carbs, so my body is not liking me right now, suffice to say. Anyway, <laughs> let's just take a quick drip, drink, and we'll get going. So let's move on to my favorite things. My family time game was very strong this month. Uh, we had my cousin's wedding, which was so much fun. I don't even know if I can explain how much fun we had. Um, maybe I will, yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a couple photos and videos from that directly after the credits. So if you wanted to see that, you can. And that way I don't take up your time here. Uh, let's see. I also went apple picking with my mom, dad, and my brother. Um, as I hadn't been in years when they wanted to go, I said, heck yeah. We ended up having a, such an awesome time. I'll also be including those photos at the end of, of the show as well. Let's see. Oh yeah, we also had a family dinner last night, which was so much fun. Um, MTI and I got together with his parents and my parents at a place near us called Sliders, which is kind of a wing joint. It's kind of a bar too, but anyway, we had a lot of good food, some drinks, and plenty of conversation. We were there, oh, I think we're close to two hours talking. It was awesome. Absolutely awesome. And now, this month there was a few things that actually came my way um, in the form of enabling. A couple that I bought myself or that were given to me. You'll love this, y'all. Um, the first thing that came in is, um, well, I'm participating in a cow that I needed fresh needles for, and that's the excuse I'm going to, going with, we're going to keep it there, but I got a pro, um, I got a shipment directly from Webbs. Uh, I did get a bunch of needles by Knitter's Pride, so I needed Marbles needles. I ended up getting a US 5's, uh, 16 inch Marble Sarks. I ended up also getting a pair of Marbles GPNs in size 5 because I didn't have those and I needed them for the sleeves of something I will mention later. I also needed a, size, a couple of size US 7s, uh, a, one with a 24 inch cable and one with a 32 inch cable, one for the sweater that I'm working on and I'll mention that again later, and the other one is to replace one that I had broken. So yeah. Uh, let's see, the second thing that I bought a while ago that just came in the mail uh, a little while ago, actually about a week and a half before uh, before Halloween, was something that I bought from the Spirit of Halloween store chain, I guess. It's, as, it, as you can tell, is actually a Halloween store. <laughs> I ended up buying a few punk, funk, <laughs> I ended up buying a few punk, Funko Pops, you know, those things. I got all three of the Sanderson sisters, y'all. Oh my gosh. I put a spit on you. Yeah, I can't sing right now, guys. I'm so sorry. Let's see. Oh, yes. We also did get a shipment from Wink. We ended up going with a 2016 Dime Red Blend. Let's see. We also had a 2017 Hashtag TBT White Blend. Let's see, there was also a 2017 Wall of Sound Red Blend as well. Let's see, and we had a apple cider type. Uh, Ephelon, it's one of, we've had before, I think it's Ephelon Gramistein. I am so sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I'll put it down below so you can see it for yourself, but oh, we love it. I think 
I think we should dive into that as soon as I finish recording, right? Um, <laughs> and let's see. Also in the box, we had a 2017 Pio Viola Pinot Grigio, and I'm sorry I cannot pronounce that to save my life. I'm thinking that's correct, but I, again, I'll put it down below so you can see for yourself. Um, yeah, <laughs> really dive dove into that one. That was a pretty good one. Let's see. Oh yes, yeah, so my parents actually did go to Ireland and brought me back a couple things. Um, the first actually came in the mail from them, a uh, postcard. Oh, I love it. I love the scenery on this one. When they came back, they also gave me this wonderful Irish wool and glove pattern set. Unbelievably awesome, you guys. It's very toothy wool, which is perfect. Uh, this was the Cushendale Woolen Mills uh, in Kilkenny, Ireland. Um, there's no colorway name directly on the, on the package itself, but oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. What do you think? Oh yeah, and my brother was also in Ireland too. He ended up bringing me back with a bookmark, which is very unexpected, but he knows I'm a reader, so perfect. What do you think? I love, 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 love this bookmark, you guys. Oh yeah, and uh, Mercury was actually in Scotland recently, and they sent us a postcard as well. Um, but also what surprised us in the mail was this awesome magnet and necklace. Oh, I love it. Oh, love it, they knew me so well. <laughs> okay, let's move on to FOs. And yes, I have a few this week, so yay! <laughs> um, the first one that I finished, I actually only finished two washcloths this month um, instead of my usual four. Um, I think I'm going to play catch up either later this month or early in December and then I will be square. Um, the pattern I've been using on these washcloths is going to be the Grandma's Favorite Dishcloth by Ruth's Slate as usual. I've also been using a US 6 which is a 4.0 Marble Cirques for those as well, 24 inch cable. I have been using Random Holiday Cotton from Sugar and Cream. I don't know the colorways. I am so sorry, but I have a lot of it. So I'm hoping to, to finish, deplete my stash of this particular colorways. Um, so the second thing that I managed to finish this month was the October DDD socks. I was using a vanilla sock pattern that I kind of tweak to fit my heels because I have really weird heels and high arches. But anyway, I digress. Uh, I had, I was using the Desert Vista Dye Works Viso Base. Uh, the colorway was Dracula because Halloween y'all. <laughs> Let's see. I did use my usual US1 which is a 2.25 millimeter 9 inch circulars and the 16 inch circs for the heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, I hope this won't change much for the other socks going forward. We'll see. Uh, so the third thing that I did finish was what I called Light Wine the Third. The pattern I used on this one was the Lantern Lights by Hohi Locatelli. I did use the Fiber Seed Sprout DK in the Neon Rainbow colorway. Oh my god, you guys, I wish I had more for myself. <laughs> uh, anyway, so I did use a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter um, for the brim, and then a US 5, which is a 4.0 millimeter for the rest of the hat. I don't think that's right. Whatever. Anyway, um, oh, I absolutely love the way this came out, and my recipients will love it when they see it because it's already on their on its way to the recipient right now. Yay! Let's see. The fourth thing that I did finish this month is what I am calling the force is strong with this one. This again was the lantern lights pattern by Hohi Locatelli. I did use Apple Tree Knits Plush DK in the Pearl Jams colorway. Uh, sorry, the Pearl Jams. It's the colorway Star Wars. So, yay! I got that from a from a yarn club actually sometime this year. I can't remember what month. I'm sorry. Um, I did also again use a US four for the brim and a US five for the rest of the hat. Love the way they came out. So on this one, I did use a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter for the brim, and a US 6, for the, which is a 4.0 for the rest of the hat. I love it. I love it a lot. And let's see, the fifth thing that I did finish this month was what I called Flat Orchid Wrap. This was the Flat White Wrap by C.C. Hellman. I did use Miss Babs uh, Caroline base of the colorway Orchid. Absolutely love it. Love, 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 love this colorway, you guys. Um, I ended up using a size US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter on those. 
oh, my recipient will love, love. My recipient will absolutely love this wrap, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm, well, I'm hoping anyway. Here's hoping, right? <laughs> Let's see. The next thing that I did finish was what I called bro socks. Um, essentially, once I started working on them full time, they went really fast. Even though the recipient of this pair have size 11 feet. I'm so in love with the stripey, this stripey sequence. Oh, all right. So I did use the pattern toe up socks with a difference by Wendy D. Johnson. Um, I did have a, I did use a 64 stitch. No. All right. So for this one, I did use a 68 stitches around. And I also used Patton's Croy uh, blue stripe rag colorway. Absolutely love this. You guys, it's kind of a muted rainbow, but not really. Love the way it worked. And I did use a size US2, which is a 2.75 millimeter needles, both in a nine inch circular and a two 16 inch circulars for the heels, toes, and cuffs on that one as well. All right, and the last thing that I did finish this month was what I called Yo Bro. This again was the uh, a 68 stitch count version of the top socks with a difference by Wendy D. Johnson. And I used Knit Picks Stroll Tonal in the Canopy colorway, which is a awesome, awesome grape color, you guys. Absolutely love this. And the funny thing is, the recipient picked this out for themselves, so I know they're going to love it. <laughs> um, I, and like I said, I, I did also use the same US2, uh, which is a 2.75 needle as well. So what I am currently working on... Um, the short answer is quite a bit. Um, there are a few things that I started since the last time we talked. Um, the first one I'm calling simply hat number one. This is uh, maybe one of two or three hats that I'm going to be making. I don't know who they're going to quite yet. Or I won't reveal who they're going to yet. Because I don't even know officially. But anyway, um, the pattern that I'm using on this one is the Ribbed Watchman's Cap by Shauna Copel. I'll put the pattern name below so that way you have that. Um, sorry, I think I'm mispronouncing. Doing a lot of mince. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of mispronouncing of things today. I am so sorry. Not completely awake yet. Anyway, um, for this one, I have been using Lion's Brand Vanish Choice in the Silver Heather colorway and also Elegant Yards Kaleidoscope in color number 67, which according to Ravelry is Ocean Breeze, but it's not listed on the label, so I don't know officially. Let's see, I have been using a size US6, which is a 4.0, uh, let's see, Marvel's Needles, which is, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm using a size US6, which is a 4.0 millimeter. Uh, there's a 16 inch Marvel's Needles that I have. And this is actually being housed directly in my Great Pumpkin Bag by Molly Klein Designs. I love how it's going so far. What do you think? The second yarn, the blue color the way that you see there, the kaleidoscope, is kind of dense, but it's going to be so super soft. And the person I'm thinking I'm giving it to actually gave me the yarn, so yay. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the second thing that I started was what I am calling simply November DVD socks. I'm actually trying out a new heel with this one, you guys. Um, I'm trying the Vanilla is the New Black um, pattern by Vanessa Fletcher. I am, again, using Desert Vista Dye Works, uh, their Viso Base, in the colorway Dia de los Muertos. I am actually going to be using a size US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter. I am going to try this on just doing nine inch circulars all the way down, even with the heel, uh, down to the beginning of the toe. And then, then I'm gonna be switching over to the 16 inch circles. So we'll see how it goes, yay. Um, this is actually being housed in my blue Jack Skeleton bag by Molly Klein Designs. I absolutely love, <laughs> love, love that Halloween can last. Past Halloween, yes. <sighs> Speaking of Halloween things that I started, I am now participating in the Halloween 2018 MCAL uh, through the Lucky Violet Yarn Company. So the first two clues are out. Um, basically this MCAL goes until everyone finishes essentially as per all of their mystery cals. Um, the first two clues are out. The second clue is going to take the longest, but that's fine. 
Uh, I am currently about an inch into clue number two. Finish clue number one in under 12 hours. Just gonna put that out there. <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, the pattern is simply called the Halloween 2018 MCAL by J.L. Fleckenstein, who is actually part of Lucky Violet, actually their main designer. I do have three different colors that I'm planning on putting in here. Um, the first, which I'm currently working on, is Pendia's Jewels uh, Hand Dyed Yarn, their Snug Base, her, I'm sorry, her snug, snug Base, in the Lamacorn colorway. And then the second one, which I should be fading in relatively soon, is from Leading Men Fiber Arts um, on their Diva Base. The colorway is London Fog. The third colorway I'm going to do is a vibrant green color that's going to be perfect, absolutely perfect for the top. I am using a size US 6, which is a 4.0 millimeter needle. I'm using those smart sticks from Jimmy Beans. Well, I absolutely love these guys. I still cannot get over how awesome, absolutely awesome these needles are. Seriously. Sorry, another tangent, guys. Um, this is actually being housed in my classic TARDIS bag, or what I call my classic TARDIS bag by Addicted to Sock, addicted to sock Knitting. So the next thing that I started since the last time we talked, um, I'm calling Back in Blue. This is this sweater I am doing for Nanny Swimo. 2018, which it is essentially a cow where you knit a sweater in a month that has to be over 50,000 stitches. I'm doing pretty good. Um, as of right now, um, actually as of, so as of last night, which was day four, I am up to 30,020 stitches, which is pretty amazing. I am about an inch and a half under the underarm. I have to get to about six and a half, maybe seven before I start the bottom ribbing, which is pretty cool. So I have pretty high hopes I'm gonna finish it relatively soon, crossing my fingers, y'all. Um, oh yeah, and you wanna know the pattern. Uh, the pattern I'm doing is, um, I'm doing the Millie pattern by Nice and Knit. And I'm actually using their fingering base in the colorway Back Bay, which is this awesome gradiated green blue. Oh, I loved it when I saw it, so I knew it had to be this sweater. Um, I am using a size US 5, which is a 3.75, and a US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter for the body. Um, I really got lucky when I got gauged the first time I swatched, so that's pretty awesome. Um, so you know that never happens to me. Never. Usually it takes a couple of swatches before I finally get the right sizing. Anyway, this one is actually being housed in my pink teapot bag by the Knitted Broomstick. Oh, love this. Oh yeah, so I did start a fifth project that I am calling Hot Damn Tune It Up. It's a shawl. Uh, I have been making a, a lot of progress on the shawl. I have finished a whole pattern rotation, but I still have three to go. So crossing my fingers I can finish by the end of the month as well for the Hohe Along. And as you guessed, this is the fine tune pattern by Hohe Locatelli. I have been using Hooker's Corner figuring in the Honey Bear colorway and Hot Dam as well. And I'm also using a third colorway, uh, Whimsy Stitches Yarn Company, and their standard sock base in the colorway Autumn Forest Walk. Oh, I love it. Love the way that these three colors are working off of each other, y'all. And I've actually been using a size US4, which is a 3.5 millimeter as well. And this is being housed in my SSK bag by the Fat Squirrel. I love, love this bag, you guys. Obviously, I'm getting a lot of use out of it. And so the last thing that I started since the last time we talked was what I'm just calling slippers. <laughs> I am essentially testing out a slipper pattern that I have inherited from my great-grandmother on my mom's side. Um, my family has been clamoring for slippers for a while, and I actually just found this since we talked last. I thought I had tested on my feet, and then we'd go from there. I will let you know how it goes. Um, so, you know, I actually, I started this one just before my cousin's wedding, and honestly, I haven't even worked on them since then. So, yeah, uh, you know how it goes with other things catching my eye, etc. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm using Paintbox Yarns in the Pixel Lavender Feel colorway. Oh, I love it. Love it. And I am using a size US 8, which is a 5.0 millimeter. And then uh, this is actually being housed in my flip-flop bag that I got from SSK 
because I'm not really quite ready to give up that summer retreat high, you know. <laughs> Let's see, another project that did get a, a lot of love since the last time we talked was what I called Gemini Whispers. Um, I am actually mostly done with the body, um, and I have added the sleeves already, so, you know, it's getting there. And I absolutely love the fit of this garment, you guys. I cannot wait to wear it. So I am using the Gemini pattern by Jane Richmond. It's my second attempt at this. Figure, hey, let's use some cotton this time. Um, specifically, I am using Knit Picks Cotton, in, which is a cotton and linen blend. The colorway is called Whisper. It's very soft, and I love working with it. I need to get back to this pattern, you guys. But other priorities first, right? Now, on this one, I'm actually using a size US 7, which is a 4.5 millimeter for the body. And then for the ribbing, I am using a size US 6, which is a 4.0 millimeter as well. I have also been working on Forever Minty. So I have done two different sections on the shawl, one which was really big and one not so much, but that's fine. They're both very busy and I need to keep them on them. Mostly I just wanted to celebrate the fact that Outlander has come back, you guys. Hashtag no more Droughtlander. <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going to try to work on this one while I watch Outlander and listen to the podcast that Ronald D. Moore started to show off all of the behind the scenes stuff of Outlander. So if you follow me on social media, you may have noticed that when I was putting up the last time's episode, I used the line, we had to tech the tech to get the podcast up. Um, basically, I was actually referring to something that Ronald D. Moore says in his podcast a lot when he's talking about notes on you know, to his technical advisors and stuff like that in the scripts, just so that the way they can know to add more technology details, etc. Um, but yeah, anyway, sorry, random tangent. <laughs> the pattern on that one is, uh, it has always been forever for me, Sahana Shawl by CC Almond. The colors that I'm using on that one are both from Lolo Did It, both on the plush sock base. The first one is Barely There Mint, and, and the second one is Sahana. It is super soft, and honestly, I just keep just keep squishing it as I'm working on it. Ugh. Anyway, I am using a size US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter needle, you guys. <laughs> so the next thing that did get a fair bit of love as well was what I am calling simply the doctor is the answer. I have gotten to a the Dalek rivet section, which is the end pattern section on an MCAL that was from 2018. <laughs> it was the Police Box MCAL by Monica Evans, if you're wondering. I I love it. I'm a bit... So the first half of the section, I did do some Pico Dots that I learned from the Ice Cream Cal that I'll mention later. Um, in the second half, I'm using beads, you guys, beads. I absolutely love how this is coming out. I am just trying to go a little bit slow, trying to take my time, but also trying to get some done Sundays before and actually during Doctor Who. We'll see if this can actually motivate me to finish it by the end of the season, right? So I have been using Lorna Slice's Shepherd Sock. The colorway is bigger on the inside. I have been using their String Quintet set uh, called March 2017 Police Box, which absolutely awesome, you guys. Uh, I just wish they were still selling it. Anyway, um, I did, I, I am using a size US 3, which is a 3.25 millimeter on that one as well. I'm getting there. I love this one, you guys. Let's see. I did do a fair bit of my everything's just peachy sweater, um, basically while I was waiting for the first to come around. Since the last time we talked, I finished the back. I have done the front pieces and the joining together of the fronts and the backs. And now I'm actually just past the first increases on the hips. I really love how this pattern is written. Um, however, however, might I request it is not your first sweater. There's so many moving parts that you just need to start with something new for your for your first sweater. Just all, just saying, in case you're wanting to do that, it's an awesome pattern. Um, and you were wondering, the pattern is The Anemone by Vera Val Amaki. I am using Leading Men Fiber Arts on their showcase base. The colorway is called Just Peachy. I am using a size US 6, uh, 4.0 millimeter for the body, and I'm using a uh, size 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter for the ribbing later on. I've also put another inch or so on a pair of socks that I haven't worked on in a while. Um, but I really just wanted to work with something with sparkles. Uh, the, the project name that I gave this one was Point Me in the Right Direction. 
you remember my my holiday socks from last year that I cast it on. I don't think I've worked on since then. But anyway, uh, I am using the CC's Vanilla Cappuccino Sock by CC Almond. I am using Gail's Arts uh, Sparkle Single Sock Plank, the Poinsettia color. Oh, I love the way it was working up, you guys. Sorry, I have to stop staring at it. Um, I am using a size US 2, which is a 2.75 millimeter um, on 9 inch circulars. And then 16 inch circulars for the heels, toes, and cuffs. All right, and finally, the last thing that got a little bit of love since the last time we talked, I have done a fair bit on this shawl over the past month as I was trying to get done before the other and Cal that I'm participating in. See previous. Um, I'm still working on the biasing of the shawl, um, which will take me quite a bit to do. Um, I'm going to have to put it, I had to put it aside for other projects though. Um, the project name on this one is the Ice Cream Social 2018 Cal. Uh, this is the, the pattern on that one is the same, uh, the Ice Cream Social 2018 Cal by Jell Fleckenstein, who is part of the Lucky Violet Yarn Company. Love, love her patterns. Um, I'm actually currently working with my third color, which is Leading Mint Fiber Arts Diva in their Deep Sea colorway. And I have been using a size US 6 4.0 millimeter as well. So I do have a little bit of silvers unraveling fast. This month I did finally frog the Falling Into Infinity project that I had. Um, I just decided against doing this project for the whole heel long. Um, I had basically cast on and then done the first row. And then it sat for like a month. So I figured, hmm, I don't really want the, uh, I don't really want that project. So there you go. Like I said, as in life, you don't have to keep knitting on stuff you don't like. <laughs> Let's move on to X's and O's. Um, <laughs> I did quite a bit of writing this month. Um, mostly FO posts on my blog. I was playing a bit of catch up in that respect. I am not sure how long it had been since I wrote about anything in my 2018 FO parade, but I am all caught up mostly. Um, I also spent a bit of time um, cleaning up the wording on the Ravelry boards for the cows that I'm hosting, um, which I will have more details on later in the year and later in the podcast. So spoilers! Radio Gaga. I have been listening to a lot of podcasts, you guys. It's pretty much all I've been listening to. I've been listening to Is This Adulting. Um, I did finally catch up with them from over the summer. And then, and then that's why we drink, minus yesterday's episode, Wine and Crime, Harry Potter and the Sacred Text. I am completely caught up now. Yay. I've also been listening to My Favorite Murder and the Knitmore Girls. Again, I was backed up a little bit, but now I'm caught up. <laughs> I did find a new podcast to me this month. Uh, it was the I'll Be Going in the Dark podcast. Um... It's a short season to explain basically how the the book I'll Be Gone in the Dark was actually put together after the author passed away in 20, 2016. Oh, I do miss Michelle though, I'm going to tell you. So also I did find uh, the Outlander Fancast podcast. Um, it was mentioned on another podcast a few months ago and I don't remember who it was, I'm sorry. Um, basically I'm just listening to this one now and I'm kind of enjoying a guy's view of Outlander and his random theories because he's never read the books before going into the season having, you know, <laughs> not read the books is pretty cool. And then about halfway through the first season, we'll see how quickly I finish those, right? So Silver's Book Pile. Uh, I have finished nine books this month, you guys. <laughs> I've been a bit busy. Um, I finished Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire because obs. Uh, I did finish The Fiery Cross by Dino Gamaldon. I have also finished A Yearning of the Reluctant Bride by Faye Sonia. Uh, I did finish Gone in the Dark, One Woman's Obsessive Search for the Golden State Killer by Michelle McNamara. Let me tell you, I love this book, you guys. Um, word of warning, if you are somewhat skittish about like scary things or true crime isn't your thing, you might want to read that in the day. In the, daytime or when you're not home or when sorry or rather when you are not home alone <laughs> um me i read it in the middle of the night and it was fine but that's just me anyway um the next thing that i finished was a book called possession a prologue by nadia lee i don't know why i'm mentioning it it's uh, yeah i did finish seaside dreams by melissa foster 
and then 10 big ones and 11 on top by Janet Ivankovich. I guess it's only eight. I'm sorry, guys. I wrote one in their toy, so I should get rid of that one from the notes. I am currently reading Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix, uh, along with the Harry Potter and the Sacred Text podcast, so it's going to be a while. I'm going to be on that one for a while. I have also been listening to A Breath of Snow and Ash by Diana Gambleton, and so the last thing that I did start this morning when I first woke up was 12 Sharp by Jen Ivanovich. So far so good you guys. <laughs> Silver and the case of the screen time. I have been watching a lot of stuff over the past month so buckle in. <laughs> uh, TV wise I did catch up uh, to the current season of Doctor Who and like I said I did start watching the new Doctor Who episodes Oh my god, you guys, I can't even with the awesomeness of this new season, you guys, and the new Doctor. Oh, Jody, you are freaking amazing. Good job. Good job. Good job. Um, let's see. I have also been binge-watching a little bit of Supernatural as well. Um, I am up to season four, episode seven. I did watch the series Halloween Wars, which is a baking show for Halloween, obviously. Um, let's see. I'm watching a Storm of Suspicion. Uh, thank all thanks to Wine and Crime. I think this is a pretty awesome, pretty awesome show on the Weather Channel. So if you are interested in true crime and weather forensics, give it a go. Um, it is on Sunday nights eight. So if you're watching Outlander and you're watching Doctor Who like I am, there's a a secondary showing at 11 o'clock. Don't know if you want to stay up that late. Anyway, um, the next thing that I binged since the last time we talked was Broadchurch because more Jodie Whitt Whittaker, you guys. <laughs> Let's see. I watched a couple episodes pair of Paranormal Witness, uh, as in like the first season. I did watch episode one of the Charmed reboot. I have to say, I am not completely sold on it, actually, um, but to that end, I am v very much a fan of the original Charmed, so I actually started binge-watching more Charmed. I'm to episode 9 of season 1 right now. Let's see, before Outlander started, I did binge all three seasons in, like, four days, so that I'd be ready. Um, I did watch the new Outlander episode last night. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, you might want to jump ahead a little bit. I'll put a timestamp now so you can skip. Um, let me tell you, this new episode, freaking amazing. My only reaction at the very end was, that is how you start the new season off right. <laughs> um, there's this one, I was seeing a lot of people's reactions to the episode last night and they were not very happy about the final song with the action sequence that was happening. Honestly, I was I was already crying and bawling. I knew what was going to happen, but at the same time you're like, oh, okay, that's how they're gonna play this. That's how they're gonna play this. Okay, okay. Like I just couldn't breathe afterward. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, but go watch the show. And let's see, the last thing on TV that I caught was the Hocus Pocus 25th anniversary show. Cause I had to. Um, there was a moment where I was like, okay, this is pretty cool. This is pretty cool. At the very end, it would have been awesome if it was the, <laughs> if it was the original Sanders and sisters getting together and singing and doing like a sing off. That would have been awesome. Like I totally would like, so that's some ideas for the 30th, right? <laughs> I'm off on my own tangent, right? <laughs> Let's see. I did watch a bunch of movies this month, of course, because Halloween had to. Uh, I did watch the new Jumanji movie. Um, it was a pretty good story. It was trying to take the classic Jumanji game board into the video game era, which is pretty cool. I like video games, so I thought it was pretty cool. It didn't do great in box office, but anyway, um, let's see. I watched Pitch Perfect. Pitch Perfect 2 and Pitch Perfect 3, because as one does, I watched the Sister Act. I also watched the 2017 Beauty and the Beast version, because, you know, I think I've watched this about six times in the past year, roughly. 
maybe seven. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the number doesn't count. I really love this new iteration of Beauty and the Beast. Let's see. Uh, there was a remake of 13 Ghosts that I watched as well. I've had this movie for years. Love it. I love it. It's probably the one movie that creeps me the heck out. Um, <laughs> Maybe not the only one, but the other one that I watched was uh, Rose Red, which is a pretty much my go-to for Halloween movies. I watched this on Halloween starting at midnight, which probably wasn't a good idea. But anyway, let's see. I did watch a lot of podcasts as well. Um, I watched a lot of my usual podcasts as well because I needed to catch up, etc. Um... And I do have a full list of those on my show notes page. I'll link it. I'll link it below as well as um, in the show notes. So you know. So basically what I'm going to start doing, um, especially this time, is I'm going to start highlighting a specific podcast that I watch. Instead of just saying, I watch my usual, there's a list, whatever. Um, I'm going to highlight a specific podcast that I watch, um, both a regular podcast, I mean, a regular podcast, or it could be on one that's new to me. Um, I'd actually like to highlight Amber of the Yarn Herders podcast, the latest, uh, latest episode, or one before the latest episode. Um, I hadn't caught up with her a bit, but I was so glad I finally got a chance to do so. Um, now, please allow me to step on my soapbox for a bit. I'm sorry, um, but if you're going to add comments on somebody's YouTube channel, why bother if you're going to be a troll? You honestly deserve to be called out by the creator of that channel. Especially, especially when you talk about somebody's significant other without actually knowing that person's significant other in person. It's considered to be bullying and it's really not cool. All right? So, let's just strive to be nicer, especially in comments. Um, I've noticed that freaking, um, thumbs down button thing. Don't do it. Just don't do it. If you don't like the episode, move along. Alright, 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 I'm done. Um, I just wanted to put that out there so you know. Um, <laughs> thank you for understanding. <laughs> let's see. Oh yes, other videos on YouTube. I have been... <laughs> watching quite a bit on YouTube recently. Um, I had binge watched the Lizzie Bennet Diaries again on YouTube. Um, if you haven't seen them, I recommend you do, especially if you like Pride and Prejudice, because yes, it's pretty amazing. Um, the premise is basically Pride and Prejudice meets Digital Era in little little bitty YouTube clips. It's been out there for about six years now. So yeah, I'm not giving anything away with that little one. Um, <laughs> let's see. I also, I also watched a lot of supernatural videos at cons. Um, lots of, lots of YouTube videos with singers and things like that, especially like voice and things are coming back. So I'm kind of catching up on last season, etc. Um, there's a lot of YouTube videos. <sighs> I've also been watching a lot of the Hollywood videos and their reaction, like people's reactions to Supernatural 2 parody, etc. I absolutely love these ladies and like all the videos that they've taken in recent past. Um, yeah. <laughs> I have also been watching a lot of Outlander Press, um, both past and present. I'm going to take a quick drink and a quick break and I will be back for all the administrati. The more you know. Okay, so a quick announcement. Um, the ladies of My Favorite Murder actually have a book that we'll be releasing just after my birthday next year. It's called Stay Sexy and Don't Get Murdered. So if you're a fan of the podcast, as well as you should be, please make sure you go and pre-order it now. It's up live. I uh, guess who has her own copy already. <laughs> just gonna put that out there. <clears throat> All right, and now it is time for a cow breakdown. The first, as usual, is the Knit to Zero KAL. This started January 1st and ends December 31st. Please use hashtag K20 and hashtag SDLK2Z on Instagram and everywhere. To be able to participate, you do need to be a member of my Ravelry group. Your projects must use at least 10 grams of yarn. 
um, so you know individual socks do count unless you've actually finished the pair. Uh, one pair will only count once, sorry. So this pertains to any project that you finish in 2018. It will definitely count. If it is not a Ravelry craft, such as scrapbooking, latch hooking, quilting, sewing, needlepoint, and holiday baking, it will count. But I do prefer, if you can, um, to post before and after photos so that I can see your progress. I kind of have this thing with photos. I love it. <laughs> anyway, um, so you know poly dipping is allowed and even encouraged. You want to know what the prizes are, right? <laughs> well, we do have 12 individual patterns of $10 or under of, of the winner's choice from Ravelry. Also do have an individual pattern by Java Pearl Designs that's given per quarter. We have a set of cupcake stitch markers by Ann Tudor, a set of sheep stitch markers by Ann Tudor as well. We also have a wonderful Outlander bag by the Knitted Brimstick and an awesome Peapot bag also by the Knitted Brimstick. And Molly Klein Designs did donate this awesome bag and this awesome set of pizza stitch markers, you guys. And you guys, what I'm most excited about, there's a wonderful grand prize. In this set, there's actually going to be a sock size tote of your choice, either from Slip Stitch Studios, Molly Klein Designs, or The Knitted Broomstick. There's also going to be your choice of stitch markers, either from Molly Klein Designs and Tudor or Wing Ones, also your choice. And the third thing in this package is going to be a $50 gift card from Miss Babs. Oh my god, you guys, I cannot wait to see who wins that. <laughs> and so you know, prizes will be drawn once a quarter, so every three months. Please make sure to post all of your FO so that way you can participate and hopefully win some prizes. So there were a few people that finished things in October. So congratulations must go to I Now Hour, Elm Call, and Moe's Crochet. Congratulations, you guys. I am so glad you finished things this month. All right. So the second Cal that I am going to be participating in slash hosting is what I called the Great podcaster craft along 2019. Essentially, this is a new cal that I am going to be hosting or co-hosting in 2019. It will start January 1st of 2019 and will end on December 31st of 2019. I will have a chatter thread up on in my Ravelry board and there is actually a Ravelry board for the cal as well. Um, I'll link that below as well as in the show notes so that way you can find that pretty quickly. Um, if you are a podcaster and would actually like to host an FO thread on your Ravelry board, that's fine. I uh, mostly say chatter threads are even better. That way people can chat in your, in, on your group as well. Uh, you can also give prizes if you'd like. It's your personal preference. You don't have to. Um, we'll be mostly doing all of that in the main group. So if you are officially participating in the along, please PM me directly on Ravelry. I am SilverLuna2112 there. I will go ahead at that point and add you to the list of podcasts participating. Um, this does include your podcast banner being added to a page there, as well as you being added to the list of moderators. So you can go in and change things if you need to as well. <laughs> um, basically, anyone who listens to any podcast at all and would like to participate and and join in, you could definitely please join in and spread the word so that way we can get this out there. Um, I am, I've already created a hashtag, which is a hashtag the great podcaster K2 together on Instagram and everywhere else. Absolutely love it. <laughs> Let's see. So, so for the rules for this cow, um, there are six simple rules. First, you must be a member of the Ravelry group. For the cow, your projects must be at least 10 yards of yarn. And so you know individual socks will count um, unless you actually finish the pair. Just so you know, one pair of socks will only count once, so you know. All right. Fourth rule is that any project that you finish in 2019 will count. Essentially, if it is not a Ravelry craft, i.e. scrapbooking, latch hooking, quilting, sewing, needlepoint, and holiday baking, it will count as part of the cow. But just so you know, you must post before and after photos so we can see your progress. Also on this, as per any of my cows, poly dipping is actually allowed and even encouraged. Trust me, um, in your FO posts, you can put what cow you're also participating in so that way we can enter our FOs if they 
qualified. All right, and now, so you know, the rule in the case of scrappy blankets, one stripe or three squares count as an FO in this context. Um, because quite frankly, who isn't working on some version of a scrappy blanket or two or three or what have you? <laughs> so for this cow, we do have a few prizes. Um, if you'd like to go ahead and add something to the prize pool for this cow, um, please PM me directly on Ravelry. Again, I am Silver Luna 2112 there. But so far, we do have 12 $10 or under patterns from Ravelry of the winner's choice. There's going to be four total copies of, of my Proud to be Me pattern, um, so one per quarter. There's also going to be a free pattern from Jabba Pearl Designs that will be given away per month, so there's 12 total of those. Oh yes, and speaking of Jabba Pearl Designs, before I forget, there is actually a coupon code in our coupon thread. If you'd like to add any coupon codes, you can add it there as well. Um, I will put the coupon code down below. There you go. <laughs> so for prizes, we're going to have a set of stitch markers that will be donated by Colson 1111322. They will send those to you directly. So there are three skeins of yarn by Nice and Knit. One will be in their sand dollar colorway and another one um, without a name on the label. Sorry guys, I don't know the name. This is on their fingering yarn base, which is 490 yards of 100% superwash merino. And the third skein is on their sock weight yarn base, which is 463 yards of 75% merino and 25% nylon. Also, no name on the label, sorry. So you know there's also going to be a, a wonderful grand prize that will be given away at the end of the year as well. If there was anyone that is willing to add to this, please PM me directly. Um, I'm going to announce this in March, so that way it gives you a little bit of chance to put in some FOs and get excited about it. <laughs> All right, we have come to the end of the road. I am pretty social. You can find me on our Ravelry board, which is Silver Stream Web Podcast. On Ravelry, I am Silver Luna 2112, as I mentioned before. On Facebook, Silver Streamland can be found at www.facebook.com backslash Silver Streamland. On Instagram, I am Silver's Treats. On Twitter, I am at Silver's Knitting. So you know, I do tend to read through all messages as soon as I possibly can. Um, however, if you don't hear from me within 24 hours, please feel free to email me directly at silverstreamland at gmail.com. Alright, so you know, on Instagram, my direct messages haven't been working, so if you are trying to get a hold of me that way, I'm so sorry. I cannot see those messages. Please just email me uh, on, at the Gmail address I just read off. Um, but anyway, as always, everything that I talk about can be found in the show notes at www.silverstreamlandpodcast.com. Okay, I have rambled for long enough. I know your time is valuable, so please feel free to join in any discussion or you can even start your own on the Silver Streamland Ravelry board. I don't bite, I promise. Anyway, please stay tuned for episode 62 on December 3rd. Until next time, happy crafting!